Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the C++ series. This time I'm going to show you how to return pointers from your functions. Alright, so this is going to be the last video in our pointers uh, and dynamic memory allocation part of the series. Then we're going to move on to a few challenges so that we can practice what we learned. And then we'll move on to object-oriented programming, which is going to be a lot of fun because that's how you really begin to understand how C++ works because that's such a big thing. But uh, yeah, let's get started here. So returning pointers from functions. Uh, it's basically the same exact thing um, that we would normally do when we're returning values, except that we're just going to put an asterisk after you know the data type. So that's all you need to do to like mark it as returning a pointer rather than just an integer. So let's say we make a random function here. It doesn't really matter what the function does, but we'll call it retrieve age. And all it's going to do is return a pointer to an age. doesn't really matter. And uh, so let's pass in an age, so integer amount. All right. And so what we're going to do is take this amount here and then make a new uh, pointer to that amount. Or no, we want to make a new pointer that's dynamically allocated and set that pointer value to this right here. So whatever is inside of here. And then we'll return it. And the reason we're going to return a dynamically allocated piece of memory instead of, you know, the one we're passing in um, is because, well, I'll explain that in a second. There's, you don't want to do that with the local variables. So yeah, let's just do it first and then I'll explain. So integer age, so it's going to be a pointer to an integer. And what we're going to do is dynamically allocate it, like I said, and then we'll take, uh, we'll dereference this and set it equal to the amounts provided as a parameter. And then finally, we can just return age. So we're going to return a pointer, see? And then that's gonna, so these match basically. And uh, even though you can, so even though I'm saying you can return a pointer, you can also return a memory address. So we could have done, uh, let's say, let's say for some reason we did return this or try to at least, we can then uh, do the address of amounts. And that's the same exact thing. You can also return uh, memory addresses, just like you can pass in memory addresses whenever you need a pointer. Uh, but yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Just be careful with that. Make sure it's a point to our memory address. And uh, yeah, so let's test it out now. What we're going to do is make a, we're going to call this function here. So we're going to need something to pass in, obviously. So we'll make an integer here. So integer bob is equal to 56. So bob is 56 years old. And then we'll do, um, so it's going to be returning a pointer to an integer. So we're going to store that in a new value. So new age is equal to, and then we'll do retrieve age and pass in Bob just like that. So what this should do is pretty, oh wait, oh yeah, the problem is uh, we're returning a pointer to an integer, right? So that means that we want to store it in a pointer to an integer, right? So we're just gonna return, we're gonna get the memory address that was returned basically and pop it right into a new pointer. So we're pointing to that memory address that was stored. Um, and then uh, we'll just print this out just to make sure that it actually worked. So we'll say uh, age of Bob and we'll do Bob. Oh, we want to dereference it, right? Because it's a pointer. All right, so cool. Let's test this out. Oh, yeah, we don't want to do Bob. We want to do new age. And let me zoom in for you guys so you can see it better. New age. So, yeah, now we're uh, using new age, dereferencing it, and we'll run the program to see if it works. There we go. So age of Bob is 56, so it works perfectly. So yeah, all we're doing, just to recap, is we're making a function here. Let me move this over. We're making a function here that returns a pointer to an integer. It's pretty simple. So let me explain why we're using a dynamically allocated piece of memory here and returning that rather than just returning the address of amount after we pass it in. So amount is a local variable, right? So that means that it's only going to exist as long as this function is being run, right? So once this function returns or is done calling, um, this you know local variable amount is not going to exist anymore. Same thing for any other local variable that we create inside of here. So if we create amount two and set it equal to whatever amount is, um, this local variable amount two is only going to exist within the scope of the function, just like the parameters. The same thing, right? So you may ask, why can we use a dy dynamically allocate, allocated integer? Well, that's because it's being allocated upon the heap, right? So this is being allocated upon the stack, and it's only going to exist whenever this function is alive. But if we allocate something upon the heap, 
dynamically, then it's going to exist um, forever, no matter what, until we delete it or the program ends, obviously, right? So that's the difference. You know, a dynamic piece of memory is going to exist um, even though this function is done calling, basically. So that's why we're returning a pointer, uh, a dynamically allocated pointer, basically, instead of directly this or this, okay? So just be careful with those local variables. And actually something else, you can you could pass in a reference to an amount, right? And you can actually return that. You don't have to do dynamically allocated memory instead because, not age, but amount, right? So if we're going to return the address of this re uh, reference variable, that is actually valid because this reference variable is not gonna be passed by value and then created inside of this function here this thing, whatever this reference variable is, it's going to be the exact same thing that is being passed in. So it's still going to be alive even when this function is in, uh, over. So yeah, just watch that reference variable uh, tutorial if you haven't already. And so yeah, that's one way you could do it. You could also dynamically allocate it. It's up to you pretty much. All right. So let's look at another example. So let's see what would happen if we want to return a pointer to an array. So let's say we have a random array here that is um, we just we have a function here that returns an array so let's say um, we'll call it we'll do string and it's a, a string array of your favorite names pretty simple right so we're just gonna pass in that string array and then we want to return a pointer to a string right pretty simple and what we're gonna do here is basically just pass it in and then pat return it also so just for testing purposes, we're not going to actually we'll do something with it. We'll do um, let's try something. Let's do let's make a loop here. So let's also pass in a size or integer size. And what we're going to do is loop through the entire array and then uh, basically reverse all of the strings or, or do something with the strings just so we can test it out. So size and what, what are we going to do? So we'll do favorite names I is equal to favorite names. So what we're gonna do is a little advanced. It doesn't really matter what we're doing here. We're just manipulating it. So you don't have to actually understand what we're doing here because um, we'll learn that eventually. We're gonna be using a little algorithm called reverse and we're just gonna reverse the string. And the reason you don't need to know what this is actually doing yet is because the whole point of this is to demonstrate how to return a string. So it doesn't really matter what we do in between that. This is just for testing purposes. So yeah, we need a um, an iterator to the first and to the last. So We'll do favorite names i dot begin and then favorite names i dot end. So what this is is basically one of the um, STL algorithms, and we'll learn plenty about those in the future, which is going to be pretty cool. Um, oh, so we can get rid of that, and that should do that for us. Hopefully, if we did it correctly, let's hope that works. And uh, so then after that, we're going to return a pointer to our string array that we have here, right? So all we got to do is just return favorite names, right? And the reason we don't have to like dereference it or anything like that is because it's an array, right? And you, if you remember, arrays are technically like pointers. You know, the first, uh, if you just have the name by itself, that's a pointer to the first value in the array. So you can do that. Um, so yeah, so let's test this out now. Again, what this is going to do is you're just going to pass in a um, array. It's going to reverse every string in that array, and then it's going to return a pointer to that array. So let's make an array here. So we'll call it uh, string um, names is equal to let's say array of strings. Yeah, and then so we'll say Cody, Bob, and Billy, and we'll try reversing each of these now. So um, so we're going to need a, a place to store the new one. So string, we'll say, let's do reversed names. Reverse names is equal to uh, retrieve age. Oh yeah, we should rename this, shouldn't we? So reverse array, that's fine. Sorry if you're my fucking phone, so annoying. All these bitches trying to contact me. All right, cool. So. Um, names and then we want the size of the array so we'll just pass in three okay cool so this should reverse it hopefully and then now we'll just print this out for testing purposes uh oops so just pass in three and then do c out name and then names reverse names oh my gosh reverse names i all right cool so let's finally test this out hopefully it works correctly let's find out
Okay, cool. So it works. We have name uh, Yidok and Bob and then Yilib. Yilib. So it's basically just these names reversed, obviously, right? And we're using this, you know, really cool function here, which our algorithm function here. So we'll learn about that later. Anyway, so that's how you return a array. So the way this, just don't forget, um, the reason, I know I just told you a second ago that you can't, you know, pass back the address of a local variable. But remember, it's an array. So whenever you pass in an array as a parameter, that's going to be a, it's going to be basically by reference. So arrays are automatically passed in by reference. So that's why you don't have to, you know, make anything else special, like make any dynamic arrays or anything like that. So you can directly pass this back if you want to. So just remember that with arrays, okay? Okay, let's do one more example and then we'll end this episode because uh, this is pretty much it too. It's not too complex. So we'll make a special array. Um, it's going to return a string again, or not array, function. So it's going to be called create names array. And what we're going to pass in here is nothing. And what we want to do is ask the user for a amount of names. So enter the amount of names. Okay. And then see in size. And we need to have a variable for that. So in size, so see in size. And then we're going to dynamically allocate an array based on that size that was just uh, created. So we'll say, um, let's think here. So string, it's going to be dynamically allocated. So right, so it's a pointer to a string if it's an array of strings. So string pointer to a string, we'll call this names is equal to new string array. And we'll pass in the size, or not three, but size. There we go. And uh, it doesn't need to be a constant because it's a dynamically allocated array. And then now what we want to do is loop through that entire size and ask for a name for each of those values. Okay, so uh, see out enter name I like that. Okay, cool. So C N names I. That should do the do the job for us. So it's going to ask for each of those names, and then once we're done with that, we can then just return a pointer to the names array that we have just created. So then we're going to go down here and test this out. So we're going to have um, well, we're going to need a, an array to st or a pointer to a string to test this with, right? Because this is going to return a pointer to a string. So we'll call this string pointer um, names ptr is e and that's going to be equal to what do we call this create names array? There we go. So that's going to do that for us. And then once we're done, we'll just loop this one more time, and we'll just uh, I'm too lazy. I mean, let's just do this. We'll say integer size. So we're going to have a reference variable of size. We'll call this. So then we can just get rid of this one. And now we're going to be working with the one that we're passing in. And it's up by reference. So that's going to be this one. So size. And then we'll just pass in size by reference. So then we can go down here and use the size once it's done. And yeah, so that should be good. So now we'll do C out. And we'll just C out each of those names, basically. And hopefully this works. So let's test it out now. Let's run this. Let's hope it works. Okay, enter the amount of names. We'll do five names. We'll say, so name zero, which is, you know, one. If you're a programmer, you understand that. So we'll say Roosevelt. Um, we'll do Roosevelt again, because there were two President Roosevelt's. We'll also do... Um, Reagan, so Reagan. We'll do Nixon. And then the final one, we'll do uh, Lincoln. Lincoln, there we go. So we got Roosevelt, Roosevelt, Reagan, Nixon, Lincoln. Perfect, that worked exactly how we wanted it to. So just to recap one more time, what we have is a function here that returns a pointer to a string. And that's going to be a pointer to a dynamically allocated string array. So we're going to ask the user how many names we want to store. And then we're going to dynamically allocate an array based on that size. And then we're going to ask for each of those names stored in the dynamically allocated array. And then return that array. So that's going to be easy peasy. So yeah, that's the basics of how you return a, a, a pointer from a function. So if you have any questions about what I showed you today, you can ask in the comment section below. Or you can also join our Discord server. We have a big Discord server with about um, 1,000, I think it's over 1,000 members now. 
So that's pretty cool. So if you want uh, to join this, go ahead and join. We have a big community. We also have these helping. We have these help channels here, so you can ask for help on anything. We have a C Lang uh, channel, so you can ask for help with your C++. All right. So yeah, that's about it. Um, also check out the code for this episode. I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so you can check out the code. And then uh, yeah, so you can come back to it if you ever forget how this works. All right. So yeah, that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.